Okay, and welcome to your second session where we do revision. I am going to share my entire screen so that it enables me to navigate between the programs. I just need to close some of the things that are open. Things that we're going to be using right now. Okay, so we're going to continue with today's session uh, with uh, study unit. I think we did study unit one and two and a little bit of study unit three. So we're just going to finish off with the study unit three content. And remember, with study unit three, we stopped at this point where um, we needed to answer this question. And I said, I'm going to show you how to answer the question on Excel, on your calculator, um, whether you're using a Casio or a Sharp calculator. So let's get down to that. So on, I'll start with the calculator. On your calculator, let's start with a Casio, or oh, a Sharp calculator is the one that popped up. Um, with a sharp calculator, remember to capture your data. You have one unit, or we call it a univariate data set, or one variable data set, because you only have one sample. You don't have X and Y. You have only the X data. So you need to press the mode, and then you need to take your calculator to that mode zero, which you say mode, and then you press that, which links to number one and the state zero is SD for this um, standard deviation or SD, you can call it SD and then you press zero and your calculator is ready to capture the data. You can, because it's just uh, one univariate, you can do row by row or you can do column by column. So I'm gonna do row by row. So my row is 29. Leslie, and can you please uh, share your screen? We can't. Am I not sharing my screen? I am so sorry. I apologize for that. I thought I am sharing my screen. Oh, yeah. Sorry. That. I said sharing my entire screen. Are you now able to see my screen? Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right. Sorry about that. Okay, so we're going to continue with study unit uh, three. Um, and the last question that we ended up with was question number 14. Uh, where we needed to calculate the value of x squared, and I said we're going to use Excel and the calculators to calculate the values. So I'm going to start with um, with the Casio. I just want to take it back out. Uh, you go mode and you go stat. And against that zero, and we are ready to capture the data. So I'm gonna go 29 and plus 30 and plus 31 and plus 31 and plus 31 and plus 33. M plus 34, M plus 33, M plus 33, M plus 33, M plus 36, M plus 38, plus 35, plus 
36 and plus and 34 and plus. And if you made a mistake, you just start again. You just clear your calculator. Second function CA will clear the values that you have captured. So it says I've captured 15 data sets. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. There are 15, so it means I've captured all of them. And once I'm done, I can just press on the on and off. Oh, not the on and off. Uh, there is a, a, you see, because this is not like a, a normal calculator. You press on the on and off. I did press the second function and it switched off. Okay, so now I need to calculate the value of the summation of x squared, which is the summation of all these values squared. And where you get the summations, they are all written in green. You can see there on the plus or minus, the summation of x squared on the dot is or full stop, it's a summation of x. On two is summation of y. On three is summation of y squared. On one is summation of x, y, and on four is summation of x bar, which is the mean. And this is the mean for the population or the mean of the sample. And your five is your standard deviation for the sample. And six is your standard deviation for the population. And if you need to calculate the variance, you would press the second function. Oh, sorry you will press the X squared button for the variance of standard deviation um, uh, for the sample or for the population. So but our question is calculating the summation X squared. So the sum of X squared, uh, we first press the alpha button and then you press the plus or minus and press equal and that will give you the answer. And our answer is option B. And that's how you will use your calculator. You need to practice all this so that then it makes it easy in the exam to use your calculator. So that is if we're using a sharp calculator. If we are using a Casio calculator, the steps are almost exactly the same. You need to take the, the calculator to state mode zero uh, or to state mode. Um, here you press the mode button and you will press the number that corresponds to the state, and you will press the one minus var, which is button number one, and you can capture the data. I'm also going to use the row, so it's 29 equal, 30 equal, 31 equal, 31 equal, 31 equal, 33 equal, 34 equal, 33 equal, 33 equal, 33 equal, 46 equal, 38 equal, 35 equal, 36 equal, and 34 equal. And I have captured all 15 of them, and I'm happy you press the AC button, and your data is stored. The data is stored on your calculator now, because the Casio, the the values of your x and the x squared are not visible. You need to press the shift and the state. Um, depending on the type of cache or calculator you have, some have the var and the sd or something like that. So you've got the two buttons for state, but look for the one that says sta or var. That's the one that you're going to be using. So you press shift. And we press the STA because it's written in orange. We press shift first. And you will have all the numbers that correspond to letters like type, data, data. It takes you back to the table. The sum is where you're going to find those sum, sum, summation of X, the sum of X squared. This, and then the var is where you calculate the standard deviation, the mean, and and all that, and the, uh, uh, the mean and the max will give you the minim minimum value and the maximum value. So we're interested in the summation. So we will press button number three, and the first one is x squared, so which is the one that we are looking for, and then we press one, and we press equal, and the answer is the same. And that is if you are using your, your Casio calculator. So let's look at it when we are using the Excel. 
So when you're using Excel, I'm just going to bring the Excel and minimize it because I want to be able to see all the views. Okay. Don't, I don't need all of the columns and I can just call this the data column. Or you can even start it at the beginning. It doesn't really matter where you put your column or you can put it in A or B. Just going to put it here. So 29. I'm going to uh, write them as a as, um, in a in a column, not in the row the way they've written them so that I can use the information properly. 31, 31, 31, 31, 33, 34, 33, 33, 33, and 6, 38, 85, 86, and 84. When it is on 16, I know that I've captured all of them because my first row is my, my header. Okay. So because I need to calculate x squared, uh, in order for us to calculate x, x squared, x squared is the same as, we can take this value and multiply by itself. Multiply by itself and say equal, that will be. And we just put, you just drag. So from calculating the first one, you say enter. And you just drag from the corner, everything. And then at the end, where we are at the bottom, you can just say this will be your summation of X, which is your total, which is the sum of all of the values. So I can do total here, yeah, total. And then I can do the summation. Summation, you will find it at the top. So I can expand the Excel as well so that you can see all the columns here. So on here, you have the summation. If I press the summation, it will add all the values of the data and you press enter. It added all these values that are here. Uh, in order for us to get these values, you can also just drag. It will calculate all the values. Something didn't work out right. Did I capture the values correctly? That's the question. Yes, I didn't enter the values correctly. The last one is 34. So in the exam as well, you will need to make sure that you pay attention to the details. So my last value is 34. I can chart it as 36 or 35. And the answer is the same as what we have there. 173. Okay, so that's how you can use Excel or you can use your calculator, whichever one you feel comfortable with. Use, especially when they're giving, they're giving you the data. Any questions? No questions, no comments. Okay, so let's move to the next question, which is question 15. So question 15 says, Using the same sample data, calculate what is the value of the summation of your X observation minus the mean squared, which is the values on um, at the um, the observation values minus the mean value. So we didn't calculate the mean value; we calculated the sum of X squared. So now on your calculator, because you have um, stored your values on your calculator, you can just press the on and off button. We calculate the mean because that's what we need. 
So that's the only thing you can do. So you just calculate the mean. And the mean is 33.8. That's the mean of this data set. Sorry. So that is the mean of this data set, which is 33.8. So we can record that. The mean is 33.8. So now what we need to do is we need to take 29 minus the mean and we square the answer and add 30 minus the mean square the answer squared plus 31 minus the mean and so on. So I'm not going to go and do it on the calculator. I'm going to do it on Excel. So on the Casio as well, you can calculate the mean. Press the AC button, shift, start. You go to var, where it's four, and you press equal, oh sorry, you go to two, and you press equal, and the answer is 33.8, that's the mean. On your data set, I'm gonna come back to our Excel because it makes it easy for us to work here. We can calculate the mean. The mean of the data set, you remember? The mean is the sum of all the values divided by how many they are. So I can just count how many they are in the bucket, and that is the mean, right? So you just take the total divide by count of all the values that you have. Or if you know that there were 15, you can just say it is 507 divided by, um, divide by uh, 15, and it will give you, say, 33,8. Now, we need to calculate this whole thing. In Hello, of, my sister. Yes. My apologies. Uh, for 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 n for our mean, and we're supposed to say uh, fifteen minus one, so it shouldn't be fourteen. Nope. Uh, remember your mean, whether it's for the population or it's for the sample. The mean of the population is calculated by the sum of x divided by n. The mean of a sample is calculated by the sum. Sorry, I'm using the wrong. No, I, 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 I. Sorry, I wanted to say the X bar, not not yeah. the mean. Our, yes. Our yes. N. Is it yes. not supposed to be one fourteen? No. Uh, the mean of the sample is the sum divided by N. So the mean formula is the same, whether it is for the population or the sample. Your formula is the same. It's just that when we represent it mathematically, for the population, we use a capital letter N, and for the sample, we use a small letter N, but the formula is exactly the same. The only difference is the standard deviation. We're gonna get to that just now. Uh, okay. After this question, the next question is calculate the variance. The variance or the standard deviation is where the difference between the two formulas are. Okay, so going back, Let's calculate what is inside the bracket first. So it's your observation, which is this. I'm going to change my, my data to X. It is my X divided by my X, oh, sorry, X minus my X bar, which is inside the bracket, right? So it's, it will be that value minus the mean, which is the value at the bottom. Now, if I want to keep the mean constant for all the values, I need to go to the mean on the uh, the red one. I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of B and also a dollar sign in front of 18 to lock the cell. So it means for all the columns on here, the only thing that will change is the X. The mean will stay the same. So I'm going to press enter. And I'm going to drag the whole thing across. 
and that is, if I click on this one, you will see that the mean stays the same. If I didn't lock the cell, when I drag, it will go on and include the other values like 19, 20, 21 for the mean because it will be looking at the next column, next column, next, or next row, next row, next row, not next column, next row, next row. So you need to lock the cell for it to work. Okay, so then you have your X bar, which is everything inside the bracket. Remember, that's everything that is inside the bracket there. We still have to do the square because we need, you have two choices. The, the last time I showed you by saying the square, you can calculate it by taking the same value and multiplying by itself. Now I'm going to change that because I'm, I'm going to do it on this side. So I'm going to change this value. And I'm going to put the X squared. X minus x bar and we're going to square the answer remember we need to square the answer so that's what we're going to do so the same button that i'm using on button number six i don't know if on your left on your laptops where is the the copy is the copy should be on 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 the letter six on the row and then if you are using some tablet the Laptops where the numbers you have a number functions on the side, you must look where your guppy is at. So we're gonna use the x squared for the x for the power. So let's do that. So we say equal this same value and we just say guppy two, it will create to the power of so it's the same. So if I can show you that it's the same, let's do on the left side. We take this value, we multiply by itself. It gets you the same value. So you can either take the value, multiply by itself, or use the guppy squared. And we just drag because it's the same till the last. And for the summation, I can just go there and do the summation. So is my summation button and equal and that is the answer and because our answer is in two decimal we can just use the decimal point at the top where it's number formatting we just format by moving the point and this reduces the decimal this increases the decimals reduces and decreases and that's how you will use excel if you have had to use excel in the exam and that the answer is option e otherwise you can calculate this manually the same way as i did so manually you will take your calculator and say 29 minus 33.8 square on your calculator and then plus and so on okay so the next question unless if there are any questions from you guys. Okay, no questions. The next question is asking you to calculate, using the same data, calculate the sample variance. Like I said, remember for the population, the variance will be the sum of your x observation minus the population mean squared divide by n. For the sample, the sample variance, it will be the sum of your x observation minus the mean squared divide by n minus one. Those are the things that we need. So now, because this is easy, we already calculated the top part, right? We found that it is 20, uh, 236.4. You can just substitute 200 and 
36.4 divided by 15 minus 1. And that will be easy on your calculators. Calculate. I can take back to normal mode. 236.4 divided by 14. Because 15, it's... Minus 1. It's number... Yeah, 15 minus 1 is 14. So the answer is 16.885. We round off to two decimal and the answer will be option A. How do we round off? Remember to round off correctly. If the number to the left of where you want to round off to is bigger than or equals to five, you add one to the right. Sorry. If the number to the right of where you want to round off to is equals to five or bigger than five, you add one to the right. If the number is less than five, you do nothing. So that is rounding up. On your, uh, I don't have to, to use the, the, the case show. So those who, with the fancy case shows, I need to take back the calculator to, to normal mode, which is the math mode. Uh, in order for me to use the fraction, 236.40 divide by 15 minus 1, which is 14, and you get the answer like that, and you just press the SD, it changes your values to a decimal and you just round off. And that is it. Okay. The next question, unless if there are any other questions, because I'm moving too fast. Um, sorry, Lizzie, can you go back to the previous screen? There, thanks. And if you want to use Excel, you can also answer the variance question because you already have your total there. You can just add another column here and say, I want to calculate the variance. And you can just say the variance is that value divided by. And you can also go back and say count the values. Come on, sorry. Let's not use count the values. We can say open bracket 15 minus 1. It will still work out the same. And we can reduce the number of decimals. Go back to home and you go back to the number formatting to reduce the number of decimals. And that will give you your variance. If you want the standard deviation, If you want to calculate the standard deviation, you just take the square root. You just press square root of the, the answer you got. And that will give you your standard deviation. On your calculators, you didn't even have to do it manually like that. Uh, because I cleared my calculator now. Oh gosh. Okay, on the case show, I cleared my calculator. On the sharp, on the sharp, I cleared my calculator. On the case show, I didn't clear my calculator, did I? I did because I went out of the state mode. Um, I went out of the state mode. Yes. So if you didn't clear your calculator from state mode, you just go back and say shift state, and then you will find on the var you will find your standard deviation, the variance and all that. Now, because what takes me, oh, sorry, I need to go, go to the next question, which is question 17, which asked about the coefficient of variation. So I need to re go back and capture the data again. 29 equals 
30 equals 31 equals 31 equals 31 equals 33 equals 34 equals 33 equals 33 equals 33 equals 34 equals 34 equals Okay, in order for you to calculate the coefficient of variation, so you also need to know the formula. Coefficient of variation, CV, given by your standard deviation divided by the sample mean. So, <clears throat> on your case, you is it? And off, are your standard deviations shift start? You will find it under the four var. Your standard deviation, remember it is the sample standard deviation is SX. So you're going to use four and you're going to divide that by going back shift, that, go back to four and we need the mean, which is two. And you have S divided by the mean and you say equal and that will give you, oh, the other thing I forgot as well multiply by a hundred. Do the same on your calculator. You just multiply the answer you get by a hundred and that will give you the coefficient of variation. So there are 12.16%, so which is option A. That is on the case here. I'm gonna go to the Excel. On your Excel, your coefficient of variation CV, you have the mean, you have the standard deviation. So it's easy. E equals your standard deviation divided by your mean equals. And we need to multiply by, you can also say multiply by one on there. You will see that it will change. Okay, it doesn't change. Multiply by 100 will change to 12.6 and you just 12.16. The same on your cashew. I don't know how many of you are using a cashew calculator. I need to go back and capture the data again. Uh, zero. And It's 29 and plus 30 and plus 31 and plus 31 and plus 31 and plus 33. M plus 34, M plus 33, M plus 33, M plus 3, M plus 46, M plus 38, M plus 35, M plus 36 and plus then 34 and plus and then we have all the data set captured we can just click on the on and off uh, we need to calculate your standard deviation also pay attention it's button number five which is sx and button number four which is the mean so just press alpha button number five divide by alpha button number four and then you will press equal and you multiply that by hundred and that is 12.16 show you excel facial calculator and a sharp calculator in order for you to practice this, you need to stop the video and try and 
practice on your own as well and make sure that you are familiar with your calculator. The more you do exercises like this on your calculator or using Excel, the more you will get it right in the exam as well, because you cannot practice and hope for the best in the exam. You cannot do that to yourself. You need to practice so that then the, the steps comes easier and seamlessly. Like you don't have to always go and make reference of some sort. You just know what you need to press after you have done something as well. It means practice, practice, practice. OK, so that is measures of. Variation and measures of central tendency. I think the next questions are more about. Um, other things. So here we're talking about the empirical rules. Uh, with the empirical rule, uh, it also uses the measures of central tendency and the measures of variation. So you also need to be able to know how to use your calculator if you are using your calculator, because you need to calculate the mean, you need to calculate the standard deviation. As we know that in order for you to specify whether things are symmetrical or non not symmetrical, we use the mean and the mode. So if the mean is equals to the median, we say things are symmetrical. If the mean is less or it's greater than the median, we say it is skewed. Now, in order for you to know which one is which, if it is negatively skewed or positively skewed, you will need to go and find out which one is which now, based on the side. So those are the things that you need to be aware of when you answer this question. Then the the next ones, which are A, B, D, and C, it's asking you for a sixty-eight percent. You need to go and calculate the mean and calculate it's a plus or minus uh, one standard deviation. So it means let's do it this way. You will start with the minus and the mean plus the standard deviation. And that will give you between because it will be between those two values. For a 95%, you will calculate, you will have your mean minus two standard deviations. So you will say two times the standard deviation that you have. And you will do the same, the mean plus two standard deviation of the values. And for the last one, just say is the mean minus three standard deviation and the mean plus three times the standard deviation and that will give you the answer. So if you are able to calculate all of them and find that they are between each one of them, we're looking for which one of the statement about the empirical rule or the distribution of graduates salary, starting salary is correct. We're looking for the correct. So the first thing that you need to do is make sure that your data is sorted from lowest to highest because in a way, the median, you will need to find the position first. So the data, looking at it in this
worry about that. I was I, load shedding. Are you able to hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Can you hear me, baby? So let's start with uh, the median. It's easy with the median and then the rest because there are more of us using our calculators. So to calculate the median, uh, we need to find the position. So the data is sorted it's in order from lowest to highest. So to calculate the median, we need to find the position. So we need to count how many they are because they told us that they are 16. So I'm going to assume that they are 16. You can also double check or verify. 16 plus 1 divided by 2, which is 17 divided by 2. It is how much? Uh, 17 divided by 2, it's, it's 8.5, right? So therefore it means the, it's located between two values. So let's go and find the two values. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Point 0.5 is between 191 and 191. Therefore the median is 191. That is our median. Uh, to calculate the, med the median or the mean, sorry, to calculate the mean, you can use our calculator. I'm just going to use the Casio calculator only for now because it, it fits. Uh, I lost my cashew calculator. I just give me a second. I need to stop sharing so I can go grab my cashew calculator again. My machine stopped, everything stopped. Otherwise, we can just continue and use the shop at Excel if this takes long. It needs to connect to the servers now. Thank you. 
Okay, so let's go back. We found that the median, our median was 191, right? So, because 191 plus 191 is 1982 divided by 2 is 191. So it will be the same. Now let's calculate the, the mean. To calculate the mean, we're going to use to capture all the values. Yeah. 105 equal, oh, I need to put the calculator to step mode. Step mode two, one, we're still using one variable. 205 equal, 105 equal, 121 equal, 136 equal, 144 equal, one. 59 equal 179 equal 191 equal 191 equal 191 equal 201 equal 217 equal 229 equal 252 equal 261 equal and 374 equal. I've got all 16 values. And off, shift, that, four, and two, equal. And my mean is 197.25. Actually, you need to multiply all the values that you get by a thousand. So the, for example, the mean there it's hundred and ninety one thousand. So it means the me the median is hundred and ninety one. The mean is we found that it was one ninety seven one nine seven uh, times a thousand will be two five zero hundred and ninety seven thousand. So our, our mean is not the same as our median. So it means it's not symmetrical. And then now we can calculate the standard deviation. Okay, so we, we should be able to answer, before we even go to calculate the standard deviation, we can answer the two questions based on those two. So, um, because the bean, number one, this will be correct if the bean is the same as, as the median, right? So we can see that they are not the same. So this is incorrect. The number B, it says that dis the distribution is positively skewed. How do we know that? Therefore, it means the mean is greater than the median. So if the mean is greater than the median, then your 
data set, your data is positively skewed. So is it greater than the median? It is because the mean is 197,000, whereas the median is 191. So the mean is greater than the median. So number B is correct. How do we calculate the empirical rules? We need to find the standard deviation. So let's calculate the standard deviation. So to calculate the standard deviation, we just say shift stat, go back to four, you press four, again, and you press equal and multiply that by a, a thousand. I'm just gonna, for now, I'm just gonna leave the mean as, so that then the calculations are easy to, to follow and calculate. I'm just gonna use the mean of 197.25 plus 60, or point, I'm just gonna use 0 0.60. I'm just going to use those two. So it will be plus or minus. So we start with the minus first. So let's calculate the minus first. I'm going to use this one. Calculate. Okay. So let's take it back to normal mode. It's 197.25 minus. 64.60 equals it's 132 multiplied by a thousand. And that is 132,650. 132,650. And it's between the next one would be, and then I'm going to ask you to do the DNE anyway. So the next one is 197.25 plus 64.60 multiply by 8,000. That is 261,850. Then calculate the next one. So this one will be 197.25 plus or minus two times 64.60. So in order for you, you need to start with the minus first and give me the answer. So it will be 127.25 minus two times 64.60 and multiply the answer by a thousand and what is the answer anyone are you guys working out or are you just watching me do the work Are you guys still here or am I alone? Oh, you are still here. Uh, it's 68,050. 68,000. Huh? 68,050 or 60. Am I writing it right? Yes. Okay. And in the plus sign, 127.25 plus. Sorry, Liz. I used 197. Sorry about that. 
Oh, yes, we need to use 197. What did I use? Sorry, I wrote the wrong. It's 197. Uh, I'm kind of confused. Where did we get the 64.60? It's the standard deviation. We calculated the standard deviation. Oh. Standard deviation. It's 64.60. All right, thanks. And the second one. So twenty six four fifty. Why it's so small? Three twenty six. Three twenty. Yes, three twenty six. Yes. Okay, and then the last one is three standard deviations. So it will be one nine seven point two five plus or minus three times 64.60. You first start with the minus. It's 197.25 minus three times 64.60 equals multiply by a thousand. It's 3,450. Three thousand is it three three thousand or three? Huh? Wait, it's eight thousand four hundred fifty. Things are things are not working out for me. Uh, you have to read the digit. <laughs> oh, it's three four five zero. Three, four, five, zero. Yes. Hi. It's way too little. Are you sure? I Three thousand four hundred and fifty. <laughs> yes. Because if you multiply yeah. uh, six four six zero times okay. three one nine three. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then there. And then on the plus side, it's three nine, it's three nine one zero five zero. Three one three nine one. Zero five zero. Am I right? Me right. Okay. Yes. So therefore, it means C, D, and E are also incorrect because they do not tie to the same values as they are here. So I'm gonna give you a chance to do this one on your own because I think number eight, nineteen is the same as that one. So let's see if you can get it right. The data is different but it's asking almost the similar question. Okay, so you will apply the same method that we went through. So let's see if you are able to do this one on your own. I'm gonna give you five minutes. Uh, when you are done, if you are able to write in the chat, you can write which option. I know that the, the, the notes you have already, but um, I don't want you to just write the um, option A, option B, I want you to write what is the mean, what is the median. You must write those answers on the chat if you have the answers for that. 
you must write um, uh, the standard deviation. So I want the answer for the mean, the median, and the standard deviation. You can write them on the chat and then you can also start answering the questions. Are we winning? You must talk to us if you are lost.
Sorry, Lizzie. Yeah, bro. On the Casio calculator, once I've um, added all my numbers, what do I do after that? I'm stuck. I can't go further. On the Casio. So yes. once you've added your number, you just press the AC button. And okay. then you press shift. And then yes. you press the start. And you follow the instructions as it says. You will okay. press four for that. And then you will press two. And that will give you the mean. You follow okay, the same. I got it. Thanks. Yes, I got it. Thank you. Yeah. Let me just also capture the date. You must be very careful with this data set. Ne? It's not all sorted. There is a number there, Are we winning? Let's check. There's nothing on the chat as well. I cannot access the chat. Okay. Fine. Give your answers and then. We will be discussing them.
habitan. We still mo need more time, or do we? Or can we? One, one more minute, please. All right. Thanks, Lizzie. Okay. So <clears throat> let's start with the median. What was what is the position would be the same as the previous one because the median position would be n plus one divided by two. There are sixteen plus one divided by two it will be on position 8.5. And remember there is this value, you just need to locate it and put it right there. <clears throat> Otherwise then everything is sorted and start counting to 8.5. It will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight point five. It's between two, three, two, and two, three, three. So we're going to say the median is between two, three, two plus two, three, three divided by two, which it's going to be two, three, two point five. Multiply that by a hand by a thousand because the values are in a thousand. Multiply by a thousand. And our median is two, three, two, five, zero, zero. That's the median. What is the mean? Did you calculate the mean? The sum of all of them divided by how many they are? What is the mean of the data set? Anyone? Shift that one since you refusing to talk to me. I will calculate it myself. It's 242. That's the mean 242. Just gonna write it down here. Multiply by since I don't have a lot of space there. Multiply the answer by a thousand. Sorry, Lizzie. Where do we get the thousand again? The salaries are in thousands of rent. So this values oh. you are seeing here, one one thirty seven, it's hundred and thirty seven thousand. So the mean is two two four two. Eight seven five. So you can come and answer A and B. Is the mean and the median the same? So there is the median and there is the mean. If they are the same, then they are symmetrical. If they are not, so we know that. If the mean is greater than the median, we know that it is positively Positive. skewed. And if the mean is less than the median, we say it is negatively skewed. This one we can also say it is right and this is left. 
left skewed or right skewed? So A and B, which one is the correct one? B. It is positively skewed. Hmm. You know what you want to know? It came up. So it is positively skewed, and you should be able to calculate uh, this. You can do on your own as well. So you have your mean and your standard deviation. So let's go back. Our mean, but the mean is, I can also go back. If we don't want to use the big numbers, we just use the small numbers. The mean is 242.875. I'm going to keep this 242.875. And then your standard deviation is you can just calculate the standard deviation by shift stat four and four again equal and that gives you your standard deviation eight six uh five six eight zero uh, we can say eight zero one eight zero eight it would be very decimals and then you use that to calculate first question, which is the first one is to find one standard deviation. It's plus or minus your standard deviation. And the second one is plus or minus two standard deviations. And the last one will be plus or minus three standard deviations and you follow the same calculations we did. The mean and the standard deviation. And then the answer, remember, always to multiply by a thousand. And that should be able to get you to the empirical rules. And that's how you do the calculations for that. You can do this. And if you are struggling, you can always contact us on the WhatsApp. Moving on to the next question, because we left with only 15 minutes for today, and I want to finish all of this study unit one, two, three today as well, so that tomorrow we can do study unit four and five. Now, Consider the starting salary for bachelor science graduate given below. Construct a box plot. So with this one, we need to calculate the quartiles. Right? In the exam, pay attention to the question. Don't spend your time doing all the quartiles because in the exam, they will tell you which one you need to calculate. For example, like this one. They just want you to calculate the upper quartile. So remember, your box plot has five number summary. The smallest value, quartile one, quartile two, which is the same as the median, and quartile three, which is the upper. So this is the lower limit. And this is the upper limit with the highest value. And from here to here, we can calculate the inter quartile range. And from here to here, we calculate the range, which is your highest minus your lowest value. Inter quartile range is your quartile three minus quartile one value. Those are the things you need to remember when you talk, when you do answer questions on quartiles as well. And what you also need to remember is for calculating the quartiles, you need to find the positions. Right? Quartile one. And writing is almost even worse than the last time. 
pattern one, you find the position by using n plus one divided by two, ah, uh, not by two, by four. And quartile two is the same as your median, which is n plus one divided by two, and then quartile three is three times n plus one divided by four. You can use that. Otherwise, some I'm not sure from which Twitter you're from. Some Twitters they might prefer to use percentages. So if you use percentages to find the position, the percentiles to find the position, quartal one will be 25% of n plus one, and quartal two will be 50% of n plus one, and quartal three, will be 75% of n plus one. So they will give you, all of them, they give you the same answer. Just 25% of the entire data set will fall between and went on all that. So you can either use either one of the formulas. Okay, so let's find upper limit. So upper limit is quartile three, Therefore, we say three times n plus one divide by four, which is three times two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. Sixteen plus one divide by four. Then you just go and calculate and say. 17 times 3 equals divide by 4 equals 12.75. Quartal 3 is located at position 12.75. Now, the question here says the value, not the position. So this is 12.75 position. You need to also remember the rules. If it's 0.25, we round down. If it's 0.75, we round up. So therefore, it means on this one, the position is actually on position 13. So we need to go and count from 1 up until 13. That's where we will find the value of your quartile 3. Not the position, the value. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10. Also, you need to make sure that your data is sorted from lowest to highest. So I'm going to start again because I disturbed myself. So the data is sorted by looking at it. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It's 200 and 8. And it's none of the answers on the I think the options on here are incorrect, but this is your quartile three. I think this corresponds to another, maybe another type of data set that they had, because I think this question had some errors as well. Okay. Any questions? 
if there are no questions, so we're going to ask you to do this one. Find the lower limit. Uh, remember, the lower limit is your quartile one. So finding quartile one, we use the formula Q1 Q1 is n plus 1 divided by 4, or you can use the formula Q1 is 25 percentile is 0 0,25. 0 0,25 times n plus 1, it will give you the same answer. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17, 18, 16 plus 1 divided by 4. And here you can do the same with 0 0.25 times 16 plus 1. Find the same answer. So what is quartile 1? Position. It should be position 4 because it's 4.25. Yes, I'm looking for that one. So it's 4.25. Therefore, we round off to position 4. So it's on the fourth position. And the same thing on this side, you can do the same equals 0 0.25 times 17 is equals to point uh, 4.25. So you can use either one. You can see that, that, that they are the same. I just wanted to demonstrate that. Um, so you go, uh, is the data sorted? That's the first thing that you need to establish. But the data it is indeed sorted from lowest to highest. Um, and position four is one, two, three, four. On F. You will Um, I just also want to double check something on this side. Um, and this side, I'm sorry. Whether they, whether they didn't swap the data. Okay, no, they didn't. Okay. All right. And that's how you do quartiles. Do we have another question? Oh, yes, we do. You have question 22 and 23, and that will take us to the end of the session. Question 22, and this is for you, not me. So you can just say it out loud. Which measures or which measure of central tendency is the most affected by outlier? I think it's a mean, number A. It is indeed number A. The measures of central tendencies are the mean, the median, and the mode. This is not the measure of central tendency. This is not the measure of central tendency. The mode is the number that appears more than the other numbers. So whether there is an outlier or not, it will not affect how you find the mode. The median is the middle number. Whether the number is higher there, it's out there or not, the number in the middle or it's small number out there on its own, as long as you are able to find the middle number, that's it. The mean is the only one that gets affected because the mean is the sum of all. If you have uh, a bigger number 
that is far apart from the rest of the number, your mean will be dragged to that, closer to that. Imagine if in your company you are paying uh, employees 3,500, 3,800, uh, 4,000, and then you have an employee who gets paid 50,000. Let's say this is the CEO, he gives themselves all the money in the business. <clears throat> When you calculate the mode, or let's say there is another person who earns 3,500. When you calculate the mode, you just say it's 3,500 because that's the number that appears more. So it means at least more than two employees in these companies are paid uh, more than, uh, they are paid 3,500. So there are more who end almost similar, uh, almost similar, or oh, yes similar salary or the same salary, the majority of the people in this company. The median is what is the middle salary that you are paying in this company? So the middle will be 3,800 because it's the, 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 the salary that is in the middle. Um, and that is in the middle of all the employees is 3,800. The mean, you will have to add all of them and divide by how many they are. So you will add and divide by how many they are. And you will say, you will say that you are paying your employees 12,000 or something like that. Um, you will be, you are paying your, your, your employees. Uh, 12,960, which will be wrong because your employees are in even any less than that because the mean would have your one employee would have skewed your data so the mean is the only one so i hope this even if it comes out in the exam you will remember it for days to come which measure of dispersion is not affected by our clients now here we're talking about the measures of dispersion are your measures of variability. Uh, so we already established that the mean and the median are not measures of dispersion because they are measures of central limits. I think the answer here is range, my sister, number E. Number? Number E, a range. Um, why is it, why are you saying it's the range? Because from what I learned, uh, what do you call outliers are like sensitive to, 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 to the range. Hello. Uh, anyone who wants to try a, a, another explanation?
Okay, so the only one, yeah. Remember, the range is your highest value minus your lowest value. So it's not going to affect your range because I thought maybe you would use this diagram that I drew now um, to identify or say things like that. The only measure that uh, is not affected by outlier uh, in terms of measures of dispersion is your interquartile range. Reason being is that it only looks at your quartiles. Remember, quartile three and quartile two. It, it disregards what is happening outside of the quartiles, right? Whereas with the range, if you have an outlier, it would affect, if, especially if your outlier is your highest value, it would affect how the range of your data looks like. But your, uh, your interquartile range, oh, let's go back there to the block, it will not because we're only looking at this and you won't have any outliers that affect that block. The only ones that will get affected will be the smaller value and the highest value, which you use to calculate your range. Your standard deviation as well will not be affected because it uses all the values as well, but it normalizes. So the only measure, yeah, is interquartile range. That is not, remember it says, not affected by outliers. Okay, and that concludes this week or whatever we are supposed to do uh, today. Uh, I, I was hoping that we can also do study unit four, but because of the lot of calculations that we needed to do, so it was not possible. So tomorrow we're going to look at study unit four and five, and I hope we're going to be able to finish all the questions from study unit four and five. And on that note, thank you for coming. Those who are looking for the link to the link to the, the WhatsApp group, right? Um, if I can still remember, I think it will be included in the recording if I'm not mistaken, but I don't think so um, because it's not part of the recording. I'm going to shut down and I'm going to stop the recording unless if there is any question related to what we have discussed today and what we have done today. Are there any questions? Uh, I was busy. Yes. M my sister. Please assist me. How can I get the, the notes? Because I I've tried to check on your own, okay. on your stuff, but Wait. I couldn't find the notes. All right, we'll sort that one out now. Okay, so uh, there are no content related questions, so we can stop the recording. Thank you.